guys. Uh, my project is uh, Deagle, or Distributed Genetic Algorithm Library. Uh, so, first off, for you to understand, you need to know a little bit about genetic algorithms. Uh, they're evolutionary algorithms. Uh, this one is based on natural selection. Uh, it works on generations of individuals, or uh, test cases, I guess you could say, for, for uh, as a replacement for individuals. Uh, each of them have a different weight, uh, and a fitness is calculated from these. Uh, it takes the best of these fitnesses uh, and keeps them around uh, based on the certain percentage that you uh, decide to keep. Uh, and then it creates a new generation based on uh, what you kept as well as some random new ones. So just a quick little, uh, so this is often used in research for the science of drugs, uh, neural networks, uh, protein folding, electronic circuit design, a bunch of different stuff. Uh, some of you might have had programming languages with morale. Uh, he made us do uh, knapsack uh, problem solving with uh, uh, genetic algorithms. And that was uh, also in the distributed genetic language. And I'd like to change how that happens a little bit. Um, so, just a little example. This is with binary weights. Uh, it doesn't have to be with binary weights. So, uh, on, the, on the left here, you have a bunch of different individuals and their weights. So, each line represents a different individual. Uh, and the one and zero means turn on this or so you calculate the fitnesses, you get those fitnesses, uh, and you keep, in this instance, you would keep the top two. Uh, you can see the top two lines there are uh, individuals from here and this line here. Uh, and this one in red is actually a cross between the two. Uh, this is so that you can um, use these, these keepers as parents, basically, for the next generation, uh, and use some new mutations to children that they produce to try and see if you can uh, gather a better uh, a better fit individual for the next round. And then after after the individual in red uh, down here, this is just another randomly produced individual. So that's the gist of how uh, genetic algorithms work. Uh, so what I'd like to do is make it distributed. So each node is doing these calculations, generating their own individual and at the end of each generation, or it doesn't even have to be the end of each generation, but some, based on the communication scheme that you provide, uh, it kind of syncs the best individuals between the nodes so that one is not wasting its time on uh, less fit individuals when the other one is already way ahead of it. Uh, so, a big part of this is nodes have to be able to, for my library, nodes have to be able to join apart at you never know when the network connection is going to go down. So you don't want your whole simulation that you've been running for hours to just go down because one node accidentally drops connection. Uh, they need to be able to calculate the fitnesses on their own. Uh, I don't want like a, a centralized server uh, to calculate anything because that just uh, it creates a bottleneck in your, your system. Uh, and they need to communicate their best to the uh, other nodes in the network. So right now, I guess we'll see, uh, they ins right now they insert, uh, they listen to these best uh, individuals from other nodes and simply insert them into their own, uh, and then they figure out which one is best uh, from their own set as well as the, the added set. Uh, right now I'm trying to figure out a better way to do that uh, so that you're not calculating fitnesses twice to figure out the best that you have received. Uh, and there's a couple different communication schemes that I've come up with for the library so far. Uh, one to all, so one node would send out uh, its best to all of the different nodes in the network, uh, as well as a ring communication in which, uh, as a node joins the network, it'll be alerted or it'll be told uh, one other, one or two other nodes it has to communicate with. Uh, so it'll have one node that it listens to and one node that it sends information to, and this way. Uh, it'll kind of, the best will propagate through the ring as the generations move on. Uh, the benefits to the one to all is all of the uh, nodes in the network will get the best individual right away. However, this requires uh, more work on a centralized server to kind of distribute these messages to everybody. Uh, whereas a ring communication 
as soon as they join the network, there's only a master server to tell you who else is in the network, and that's all the work that it does. So you can have it communicate with these other nodes uh, and not worry about uh, causing a bottleneck within a centralized server. Um, right now, uh, I only started this project this semester, so I'm not too, too terribly far along. But uh, originally, it was a compiled library, and I moved to a header-only library uh, just for ease of moving it around and compiling on different compilers and whatnot. Um, and as of right now, I'm uh, playing with different message queuing, uh, message queuing libraries. I think I've settled on zero Q, uh, but I'm also uh, debating whether or not I want to create my own uh, sort of network communication to reduce some of the overhead that zero Q has. So that's that's the point that I'm at right now. Uh, so yeah, population control, which is the generation control, is almost completely done. I have to add in uh, checks for whether or not you've reached your goal of fitness or mass generation or whatnot. Uh, communication has started to connect coordination servers to tell other um, to tell other nodes who else is in the in the network. This has also started, uh, but I'd, I'd like to. Uh, 